Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about the relationship between chronic fatigue syndrome and environmental stress and what you can do to handle it. Chronic fatigue syndrome, or CFS, is a multi-system disease that can lead to long-term pain, disability, and of course, chronic fatigue. Now, there are many speculations as to what causes chronic fatigue syndrome, but in my understanding, perhaps the most logical or rational explanation is that chronic fatigue syndrome is really nothing more than hypothyroidism that manifests uniquely depending on individual susceptibility. When looking at the symptomology and the term chronic fatigue syndrome, it directly implies a lack of energy. And it is our thyroid gland which is responsible for the regulation of oxygen in the metabolism and therefore the efficient production of energy. So the thyroid is what drives oxidative phosphorylation or energy metabolism and it is our pituitary and adrenal glands and the stress chemicals involved that drive other forms of metabolism or stress forms of metabolism like glycolysis which only produces 2 ATP. So considering the fact that ATP is biological energy more or less, I think it makes common sense that thyroid driven metabolism which produces 32 ATP is much more efficient than the glycolysis which only produces 2 ATP. ATP. And of course, if you have less ATP, you're going to be less energetic and probably more fatigued. Not to mention that a lot of the symptoms of hypothyroid and chronic fatigue syndrome tend to overlap, uh, of course, with the exception of some unique uh, manifestations of symptoms, again, given the unique individual susceptibility. But overall, the symptomology between the two are very similar, probably because they have very similar pathologies. Now, I've already made an entire video on chronic fatigue syndrome, what it is and what you can do to correct it naturally using Chinese herbs and other lifestyle practices. But in this particular video, I wanted to cover one of the uh, not so commonly talked about causative agents in chronic fatigue syndrome and something I didn't dive into detail in that video, which is the roles that environmental toxins or environmental stress has on the metabolism and therefore chronic fatigue syndrome. Now looking at a study on the metabolic features of chronic fatigue syndrome, it was found that metabolomics showed that chronic fatigue syndrome is a highly concerted hypometabolic response to environmental stress that traces to mitochondria and was similar to the classically studied development state of dower. Now just so you know, dower is referring to the dower state, which is a hypometabolic hibernating state that worms go in just to be able to survive really harsh, unfavorable conditions. And something incredibly important to know in the physiology of hibernation is the roles of serotonin. So hibernation is more or less a really suppressed metabolic state, so a really slow metabolic rate ensuring that you can survive on little to no energy. Now, just so you know, this is a stress state. Although it helps you survive, it's not very conducive to proper energy production. Just imagine how much energy a hibernating worm or bear has, probably little to none. Now, again, one of the major key features or key players is the production of serotonin, which suppresses the metabolism, leading to not just low energy production and fatigue, but it can lead to a deficiency of dopamine because there's sort of an antagonist role between dopamine and serotonin. So as serotonin is going up, your dopamine is dropping, which is not just attributing to low energy, but feeling lethargic and sort of apathetic, if you will. Now, what this study is getting at is there's a strong correlation between environmental stressors and toxins and a hypometabolic state. In other words, environmental stressors, like any stress, suppresses the metabolism, leading to less efficient energy production, fatigue, and a lot of the symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, at this point, we have a very helpful clue as how to correct chronic fatigue syndrome, which is to suppress or lower the production of serotonin. But before I get into tips on how to do that, I want to point your attention to another possible causative agent that could give us some helpful clues and tips on how to correct chronic fatigue syndrome by looking at the nature of environmental stress. So first, some examples of environmental toxins. These are things like the heavy metals, the lead, mercury, cadmium, as well as formaldehyde, radiation, and other air pollutants, as well as herbicides, pesticides, and a lot of our household cleaning products, personal care products, our clothing, and most things born of the modern industrial system. So as an example, one of the most commonly used herbicides in the industrial food system is a chemical known as atrazine. And in one clinical trial, atrazine was found to greatly suppress the gonadial production of testosterone and other androgens in male frogs, so much so having such an estrogenic effect that it turned the male frogs 
into female. So it was completely feminizing. That's how powerfully estrogenic that particular herbicide was. So atrazine is just one really intense example of how a lot of the environmental toxins work. They ultimately disrupt your endocrine system by altering the production of androgen hormones and increasing the production of estrogen in the body, which is obviously an unnatural endocrine process. So naturally your endocrine system is going to want to produce more androgen hormones and secrete little amounts of things like estrogen only when under stress. So again, this is the stress of environmental toxins. They are ultimately estrogenic and they diminish the production of your androgenic protective hormones. Tying in the whole picture now, Estrogen just so happens to stimulate the production of serotonin. And serotonin, next to estrogen, is one of the major causative agents in the suppression of the metabolism, leading to the hypometabolic state that results in inefficient energy production and therefore fatigue amongst pain and other symptoms associated with chronic fatigue syndrome. Not to mention that estrogen in of itself directly opposes thyroid function, which would lead to hypothyroidism, giving life also to a lot of the symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome. So for those of you struggling with chronic fatigue syndrome and you don't know why, well, first and foremost, chronic fatigue syndrome is another word really for hypothyroidism. And there's many reasons the thyroid becomes suppressed, but it all ultimately traces back to stress in the chronic production of stress hormones like cortisol, estrogen, prolactin, and serotonin. So in addition to handling your psychological stress, your dietary stress, your other lifestyle stress, this video brought to our attention that one of the major stressors we're exposed to regularly is chronic environmental stress or environmental toxins, which are ultimately stressful because of their estrogenic nature. With all this in mind, I have Two very simple tips for you for correcting chronic fatigue syndrome and hypothyroidism, which is to take proactive steps to inhibit the production of both serotonin and estrogen. Now I have separate videos on these topics, so definitely search these on the channel to get further, more in-depth information. But just to leave you with a little helpful tip, one of the best herbs for inhibiting the production of serotonin, one of the few herbs that actually has an anti-serotonin effect is ginkgo biloba. This is a fantastic herb for anybody that's stressed. It inhibits the production of not just serotonin, but also cortisol. It's a really great herb for anybody with low energy or symptoms of hypometabolism. Now, in addition to that, I would highly recommend watching the video on how to inhibit the production of estrogen, but I have three really great herbs for doing this. The first is milk thistle, which contains a compound known as silymarin, which inhibits the production of estrogen, and it also helps to destroy estrogen. The next one is going to be agaricus mushroom, which has an anti-aromatase quality, which protects your androgens from becoming estrogens, which is one of the key features or effects that a lot of the toxic herbicides have on your body. And the last herb I'd highly recommend is the utilization of pine pollen. Pine pollen acts very much like milk thistle. It not only helps to destroy a lot of the estrogen in the body, it's really protective against environmental stressors and all the estrogenic substances. It's highly anti-estrogenic, but it's also going to help increase the production of androgens in your body, which would oppose and suppress or keep in check the production of estrogen. However, that does bring this video to a close. If you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos. And if you're interested in supplementing with any of those anti-serotonin or anti-estrogen herbs, you can find all of those on our tonic herb shop in the description box below.